Hello, Vince Roman here from Burns Stanley's with our fourth edition of Vince in Shorts. It's been a couple of weeks since we've uh, spoken, but it's been busy in the shop and haven't had time really to get the video camera out and record one of these, but I want to get back on track again, trying to get these out about once every week or so. So the, today's subject is going to be collectors. We've talked about head flanges, we've talked about tubing, we've talked a little bit about header design. But a lot of you have really been asking about collectors, and of course, Burn Stainless is really known for its collectors. So as we return back to our 4 into 2 into one or Tri-Y exhaust system, we see that we've got, in this case, one, two, three collectors, therefore a Tri-Y collector. Now, this collector here, which we can probably see on this uh, final collector here pretty well, is that this is a parallel entr entry collector. We go down to a, what we call the collector outlet or a throat. We go to a transition and then we go to a larger tailpipe size. The purpose of this collector throat or collector outlet is to try to broaden the power band of the uh, exhaust system. Moving the final collector from our Tri-Y header system, we can see the makeup of the collector. It's made up of the actually what we call a base collector, a transition, and a ring. This base collector is the two into one portion of the system and is actually made from 15 degree bends. And the reason we have chosen 15 degree bends is because that gives us the shortest exhaust collector um, with, with the best power system. If you take a look at a typical ASME Venturi system, you'll notice that the convergent angle coming into the system is, is 21 degrees included and about a seven degree taper on the outlet. Now, a burst collector is not exactly like a Venturi and although that's really where we started, which a 21 degree included angle would actually correspond to a 10 and a half degree merge angle, but as we had done our testing, we have found that anywhere from about eight degrees up to about 15 degrees is the optimum angle for a merge collector. <clears throat> if you go narrower than um, eight degrees, you, become, you get a very long collector <clears throat> and you start having wall losses. If you do a steeper collector, the, the angle here where you're trying to turn the flow disrupts the flow, causing pressure drops and therefore reducing power. But anywhere between about 8 and 15 is really ideal for a naturally aspirated collector. Now, we make collectors in many different uh, configurations. This is a 3 into 1 collector uh, with a reverse cone megaphone. So this would be a drag racing style collector or we've actually used it on a lot of uh, road racing uh, 911 engines that uh, do not have to require to run mufflers. Of course, we have the traditional four into one collector, five into one collectors. And the reason I'm just showing them to you is they're actually kind of interesting uh, to look at. And they're actually, in my case, actually, I, think, I think they're actually very beautiful. <clears throat> and what most people, we make six into ones. I didn't have an example of it to uh, show you here. But this is the eight into one collector. And this one usually, when we take it to the PRI show, attracts the most attention. And collectors are very popular in off-road racing. Not necessarily because of the power output of the collectors, although that's very good. But the engine sound that they make is absolutely tremendous. Plus again, and it is a very, uh, compact package in comparison to let's say a two four into ones and a final two into one which might be better from a torque and power perspective power band rather but in terms of packaging this is really uh, very uh, much easier to do especially on those off-road buggies so we'll spend a little bit of time this is actually a four into one collector that we have actually opened up the side on so that we can take a look inside and how the collector is made. Uh, many people will often look at the, uh, the goylet that's on the inside, which is that little pyramid that's formed from the three 
from the four tubes that are going into the collector. And that is really just a natural artifact of bringing four tubes that are angled and uh, slicing them into each other, fitting them together, and you get that. But when you look inside, what you do see is you see a very smooth transition from the four tubes to the single outlet tube. And that change in area that's occurring inside the collector as we move downstream in the collector is very important because in order to try to get the best uh, pressure recovery, we want to keep that area uh, changed to be as, as little as possible. And that goylet forming in the center, kind of a collector that you'll often see out in industry is what we call a formed collector. A formed collector is really a collector that's been formed from a single piece of tubing. They've actually put a clover leaf shape, in the case of a four into one, into the collector and taken the four tubes, welded them into this side and usually the outside is rather large. Those types of collectors, because of the um, unevenness or rather the uh, non-uniformity inside of the collector, do not perform nearly as well as a merge collector. A lot of people will actually take a, what they call a pickle or a goylet and put it into that formed collector and trying to say that that's going to make it a merge collector, although it might make it a little bit better depending on how well it's done but it won't make it anywhere as near as giving you the efficiency of a good four into one mer merge collector. Same, same things apply to the three into ones, five into ones, eight into ones. A couple other things to note in this uh, collector is this outlet. You'll see that the way that the outlet is formed is, is, th is that we have begun transitioning from the angle out to the transition in the end of the collector. And, and this uh, profile here, this curved profile, has been, uh, very, has been carefully uh, chosen and we actually have special tooling in order to, to do that. That is one of the very uh, unique things about Burns Merge Collectors. And if you take a look at collectors from other manufacturers, uh, this area here is very uh, abrupt. And again, when we're talking about uh, uh, exhaust flow, um, it's very important to try to make these transitions as smooth as possible. Um, now, let me just uh, step back a little bit to the two into one collector. So this is the first one that I showed you, which is the parallel merge collector and is really the collector that is the, is the most popular and is useful in, in most applications. However, sometimes you have some it's situations where uh, that doesn't really work out very well. In which case, this is what we know as a splayed collector, where we have actually brought the two tubes out at 15 degrees each size, or a total of 30 degrees between the two angles. Sometimes, when you have to bring two tubes in from other areas, this splayed collector works, works very, very well. And this is what we call a half splayed collector, where we have one at a 15 degree angle and one being just splayed out. The angle between these two inlets in this particular case is 15 degrees. So again, sometimes the parallel collector is going to work for you, sometimes that splayed collector is going to work, and in other cases these half splayed collectors are going to work very well. Particularly when you're building a tri-y header with very short primaries, I might show you some photos of systems that use them. So that is what uh, I'd like to talk about today. And I hope that uh, you've enjoyed this edition of Vince and Shorts. Take care. And it helps us with that transition from the four tubes to the single tube.